Very tasty. Some not terrible sounds there? No. So good. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here, and a uh, special hello to um, our more recent viewers. Yes, hello more recent viewers. Yes, uh, some of you guys have been with us from the start. Thank you very much to you guys. And we're, what we're noticing from the numbers is we're picking up more and more and more people. So welcome to That Pedal Show. We're really pleased to have you along. Please subscribe. Yes. So you can see when new videos come out. And uh, if you feel so inclined, hey, buy a t-shirt. Hey, indeed. There's the sales pitch done. Looking rather fetching in that. Um, yeah, indigo blue. Down. Indigo yeah, blue. Military green there. Yeah. Okay, Nick. Yes. Right. We actually. This is this is interesting. We've been asked all the time to feature some perhaps more universally available things, and we actually have a Fender. Is it the Blues Junior? Yeah. Hey. So, you know, you can walk into a guitar store and just buy one of these. <laughs> yeah, so quite often we get comments that say, oh God, you guys use all these boutique amps like Mallards and Two Rocks and other things like Super Reverbs, which is not boutique, but it's also it's very expensive and quite hard to come by. So can you please do some videos using normal amps? We don't own any normal amps, but we do own small amps. And these are the two smallest amps we own between us. Mm -hmm. Marshall Class 5. Uh, Kicking, so, awesome. Yeah, thing. unofficially referred to as the five watt blues breaker. Came out, I don't know, six, seven years ago. And the ubiquitous Fender Blues Junior. Yeah. So this is not about sounds at very low volume. This is not bedroom sounds because you'd need like a bedroom in Buckingham Palace to use these amps. This is, you can gig with this, no problem. No problem at all. In fact, I have gigged with one of these. Dan, I'm going to give you the honour at this point, because it's usually me that pops the horn, but you Wicked. might enjoy this. I will. I remember going to the launch of the Class 5 yes. where at Ronnie Scott's, yes. where Joe Bonamassa yes. <laughs> where Joe Bonamassa okay, good um, played the launch party with two Class 5s. Really? With his, with his full band. But he sounded awesome. Sounded, well, he always sounds spectacular, but sounded, yeah, great. Obviously, it's mic'd up and everything, but anyway, that's my uh, little bit of name drop. That's fantastic. Name drop, uh, name drop there. So, okay, so we don't really have a, an agenda for this video other than can we get some good sounds out of two small amps? Well, the mm -hmm. answer is yes. What we got on the board, Dan? Okay, so we have the new Vibronaut from Love Pedal. This thing is super swish. <gasps> Do you want to have some taste of cheese? Okay. So. Why, why does one want to do that sort of thing? Yeah. So what is that? That's, is, vibe. Is, is it vibe. sort of vibe? So it's vibe vibe. Yeah. So it's not a vibrato. It's a vibe. It's a, yeah. It's a, a phasey. Yeah. Vibe. It's a phasey yeah, yeah. vibe. Yeah. Nice. Isn't that lovely? Sexy. Really cool. Uh, we have the wonderful Cali seventy six. Um, so here you go. So clean sound. <laughs> With a compressor. Anyway, anyway. it was going all right for the first half of that. Great. Yeah. yeah. Just, just a spectacular, spectacular thing. What do you say about compressors, Dan? What do I say about them? Hmm. It's the overdrive. Oh, okay, that one. Yeah. The compressor is the overdrive for your clean sound. Yeah. Feeding the lines, you see. There you go. I can't count how many times you said that to me. I know, I know, but I, you know, I always need a bit Yeah, of why is it an overdrive for the clean sound? Because it, what it does is, the way that an overdrive pedal compresses and sustains, well, this does the same thing, but without clipping and distorting the way that your overdrive pedal does. So, if you're going to have a, a solo, for example, and that normally you would be, if you can hit on my... Oh, sorry. Thank you. If I'm on... See these things? This is a Let's do a show on these. This is a potentiometer. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so, uh, if I'm just... What the compressor will do, is it will just lift... So that's really nice. Yeah, but, but again, I can get this. And it'll, it just sustains those notes beautifully. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's the best compressor I've heard. We've said this before. I love it. We've said this before about these compressors, but most compressors, I think a lot of people go, oh, I need to get a press compressor, get one, and go, hmm, changes the sound a bit too much. Mm. That's that's barely barely noticeable yeah, until you realise it's, so, it's doing the sustained thing. Yeah, yeah, it's so clever. Very because nice. It, it has, um, instead of being a blend, you've got different level controls for your dry sound and your and your output sound. Right. Right? Okay. So, it's, yeah, so I just get the dry sound, which... exactly the same as the you know the input signal and then I blend the, the compression on top there's so no, no overdrive pedal at no, the moment is no, there no. nice because uh, so one of the benefits of smaller amps is you can push them into a little bit of natural drive a bit quicker than you would with a bigger yes. amp and that's definitely happening a bit there yeah can we just hear the amps on there you know yes, uh, the marshall and then the um and then the fender perhaps okay there you go you swing So, what's really great about this, <laughs> they are voiced completely differently. Yeah. The Fender is scoopy, the Marshall got that lovely mid push, but when you hear them together... It's so good! There's something that happens to the bottom end when you use two amps as well, isn't there? So... Well, just, yeah, so all the frequencies add, yeah. as, long as, you, as long as they're in phase. So if you play the same thing again, and I'll, I'll turn them out of phase. So you hear them when they're in phase, the bottom end comes in, so it yeah. sounds absolutely lovely and gorgeous. Um, but the, the two small amp thing, it's such a fantastic way to get a killer sound without, you know, everyone's ears bleeding. Yeah. Um, when I talked to uh, my mate Peter Stroud, who... <laughs> so he's... He's obviously a Sheryl Crow's guitar player, oh. <laughs> and and uh, incredible, incredible guitar player. Oh, his groove him. and his feel, I mean, it's it's astonishing. And he uses his the um like these t the the two sixty five amps. He's using a, a Tupelo how do you spell it, and they got so many. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But they're fifteen watts each. Yeah, and his sound man. Yeah, yeah. Oh because if you word. if you're struggling, uh, as a lot of us are with volume, where obviously your 50 watt amp is starting to become too much or whatever, whatever. If you're, you're struggling with volume uh, when you play live, you might have a girl singer. Um, um, you, or you might have a male singer who doesn't like volume. Who doesn't like volume? Or you know, whatever. There may be reasons. You might have a very unfriendly uh, gig promoter who's annoyed with you putting your stacks in the corridor, like uh, Simon Neal from Biffy Clyro. Um, it might seem completely crazy to go, do you know what, I'm going to use two amps. But eventually, as we gallop towards the point, mm. um, two 5 volt amps can just, not a huge amount of volume, but just sound so big. Anyway, yeah. lest, lest we, that will become apparent yep. as we go along. So, can you get... Daniel, good sounds out of normal amps. Absolutely. Yes, you can. Yeah. And here we go. Part of the reason is 
like the amps being made today that are within budget are great. You know, the Blues Junior is a fantastic sounding amp. Got to be the most popular professionally used tube amp, I would have thought. Yeah, well, in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. must be. Yeah. Jeff Beck was using a couple of them on Hoot Nanny this year. Right. <laughs> Just down there by his feet. They sound fantastic. Yeah. And like this little class five thing, it's awesome. Mm. So the point with the small amplifiers is that you can turn them up and you get the amp working. You get that natural compression going on with the amplifier without taking people's heads off. Mm. Yeah. If you're doing this at a gig, you do want them mic'd up. You know, generally uh, the really small amplifiers, like the 5 1 amplifier, you'll hear it with a drummer, you yeah. know, no problem. But to get the spread of that out there, because this yeah. is a 10 inch speaker, yeah, yeah. you know, to get that to go everywhere, you, yeah. you know, stick a mic in front of it, you know, two amplifiers, two mics. And most of the time it is just a, it's, it's just a little bit for spread. Yeah. It's not that you can't hear it and they need to turn you up in the PA. Yeah. But what happens is the sound guy has more control over the level. And I've not met, when, when I was using a couple of small amplifiers, I'd not met a sound guy who wasn't grateful, who just said it sounded <laughs> fantastic out the front because he had control over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, how many uh, artists I work with who the sound guy said, well, I don't really have them in front of the house. You know, they've taken them all out and these, it's just, you know, stadium filling rock tone from the back line. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, this is a great way to get a great sound in any venue with, you know, microphones in front of them. Yes. Right, come on then, uh, let's... Clean sounds? Clean sounds, okay, so the point with the clean sound, so with the amplifier turned up, you have train. So you can feel that when you dig into that, it's already compressing a bit. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Right. Lovely. Great. You Lovely. Can chop away on that all day. Yep. Now, because there's not... Because the, the... Okay. We don't have a huge amount of power there to move bottom end. Yeah? <laughs> Place your comments here. Um, <laughs> But the way that power works in relation to frequency, it takes a lot more power to amplify yeah, yeah. lower frequencies than yeah. less upper frequencies. And because we're using such low wattage amplifiers, we're not going to get crazy amounts of, of bottom end. So if we put more bottom end into the amplifier, um, it can sometimes be, be a really nice way to you know, fatten things up. Yeah, and yeah. get a bit more compression. And get a bit more compression. The amp's exactly. working hard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A really good example was the Tumnus. Now, the Tumnus is that clone that we love, but it has more bottom end added to it. Yeah. Right? In fact, it's a great choice for small amps for that it's very incredible. reason. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So if you just, you know, the same thing. Very mid pushy through these. I mean, that's that's loud. That's loud. If yep. I was doing a like a little bar gig with a drummer who's got bat sticks instead of proper sticks, and you know, it's it's a relatively sensible affair. Yep. That's easily loud enough for that. Yep. For that environment. We we'll turn it down a bit. Compressors is so sweet. Adds fatness to the. Uh, where is where is the compressor in the chain at the moment? It's not It's not on. It's just the tumulus. But is it? Is oh, it it's before. Before. It's before. Could, could we switch the? the... You got the compressor after the overdrive? No, before. Let's try that. Okay. Here you go.
Sounds awesome. It's not very loud, no. but the amount of um, dynamic yeah. in that with the with the compressor. What happens? What happens uh, on the old um, RuPaul there? That's a cool sound. It's really nice, isn't it? And I love, I'm having, still having trouble with this today. I love the fact that because the amp's compressing, if I, if I start rolling off of my volume controls, it doesn't really get any quieter, it just compresses a bit less. So. sound nice isn't it lovely what a really cool so, sound yeah, big big fan of the tumblers for that reason yeah you know obviously it works great with big amps as well but with the small lamps where you want to really try and preserve that sort of bottom end mm. i think it's it's, fun it's function as a kind of a more of a mid boost thing is more obvious of in course. a smaller amp because yep. of everything we said about the bottom end but yeah very nice and i just it works so well with that compressor yeah i'm um, that's killer Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy good. It really is. Um, yeah, so one of the things with with the small amplifiers that you need to be careful of, if, you're, if your overdrive pedal is too compressed, yeah. it can get fluffy. You lose it, yeah. You know? Um, so you know, clarity in an overdrive pedal is really important. If you've got, a, if you've got a, an overdrive pedal that's like... Um, like in this amp in a box type pedals, yeah, that sound fantastic with amps with high headroom and, and huge dynamic and, range. And huge dynamic range, completely. A bit like when we're talking about with the tube overdrives. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So, tube overdrives arguably will struggle in this scenario, but something like um, I mean the King of Tone, for example. Um, if I click on the King of Tone. Because of the dynamic range of this pedal, so fast right the transients are so quick and it just pushes through that compression really nicely yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but a fluffier sounding overdrive pedal would struggle I mean the, so the Carpe Diem is another lovely sounding thing that's got you know, nice fast attack <laughs> Which is the bottom Which end? is the this one. one there, yep. Yeah. Can you hear the speakers starting to fart because they can't... Yeah, give us that know. again. Yeah. 
makes the whole thing compress more. Exactly. Because the amps have yep. to put out more bottom end, struggling yep. a bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So in that sense, I guess you you would think about your. You might use your pedals differently than mm. you would into into a bigger. bigger yeah, amp. and if that's your rig, you design your rig. You yeah. design the pedal board around the amps that you're using. It's if you're doing like fly dates, and you don't know what you're going to get, it's perhaps not the best idea to set everything up for really small sounding amplifiers, mm. unless you can you know, crank the amps that you get. But if you if you're travelling everywhere with your own amplifiers, that like most of us do, you set up the board to mm. suit the amps that you're using. It's a great way to get really killer tone um, without taking everyone's heads off. It's still loud, you know. I mean, you can easily gig with that. Oh, I know. mean, that's yeah. The amps are on. The Marshall's on about three or four, kind of you know, ten o'clock, and the Fender, well, barely even. It's like two. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's plenty, of, plenty of volume there if you if you need it. Mm -hmm. um, should we get into some uh, some spacey things and some modulations? Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's have a look at. Put the compressor on. So the warped vinyl. Check this out. Grab the. Um... <laughs> with that. You can indeed. <laughs> you see how that's compressing, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so the modulation takes on a different character, yeah? Now imagine that sound, because there's there's not too much bottom end out there, mics on the sound guy just goes and you will just sit in mm. so perfectly in a mix with that. It's beautiful. Let's just try, um, can we have the exact same sound? Yep. Uh, Marshall on its own and then Fender on its own? Absolutely. It's a happy place. Such a cool sound. It's awesome. And because you know, we're not talking silly money here, you know, we're talk and, but the amps are so, um, they're not diametrically opposed, but because they're voiced differently, yeah. but they work so well together. Yeah. It's such a full rounded sound. The amps are doing very specific jobs mm. together, just sound magic. Actually, we also, should also say, you can probably see in shot there, there's a Victory BD1, which not quite sure which order they'll go out in, but we just did a video on um, boosters. Boosters using the oh BD1, another small amp. Oh, I mean, oh, it's, oh. I mean it's, it's it's about you know as big as your thumbnail. It's 28 watts, so it's not exactly small, but it's exactly the same size as my yeah. thumbnail. Uh, uh, but again, it doesn't it doesn't really matter what small amps you choose, as long as you get two that are kind of that, that work well together. Yeah. We cho obviously we've chosen these two because it's two huge brands and they're extremely. This one is extremely um, popular. Mm. Right. Uh, reverbs and okay. delays. Yeah, yeah. So let's do that. Okay. So, I mean, in doing all of this, I guess another thing we get asked for is people say, "Oh, could you just show us a board, or could you just put together a board that's kind of normal, um, a good selection of effects?" Now. Uh, the pedals we got here are far from normal, but the selection of effects, i.e., overdrive, boost, distortion, reverb, delay, phasing, chorusing, you know, vibe, vibrato, a modulation chorus, thing. Modulation yeah, I mean, that's thing. if you were going to put six pedals on your board, that's probably what you'd put. I on, could, isn't it? yeah, absolutely. I could gig today. Yeah, with this, you know, no problem whatsoever. Uh, you know, it's only about three grand for that pedal. <laughs> Actually, it's not that much money, but 
Um, but in answer to that, you know, a good selection of pedals, boost, overdrive, distortion, mm -hmm. some sort of modulation, reverb, delay, compression. Happy days. There you go. Sounds like a lot, but that's all the basics covered. Yeah. As well, there's not, there. there's really very little you couldn't do mm. with that. Um, okay, so reverbs and delays. Now, again, because we're going into amplifiers that are compressing naturally, so if we have a listen to the reverb, into this, so if you play. Now, if we add reverb to this. Because the amplifiers are compressing, you'll find that even a bright reverb can work really well. Mm. Sometimes into the big open clean amplifiers, that sort of reverb can sound a bit sterile. Yeah. Because it's, but, but with Actually, this... let's just turn the reverb off in the, in the amp itself there. There's a little bit of amp on the Blues Junior, but... So this is just from the MXR M300, yeah? Okay, well this is direct then? Yeah. Nice. I mean, that's a clean sound. Awesome. What did we have there? What was on? Just the compressor, the Memory Man, and the MXR reverb. Wow. I mean, it's incredible. So in terms of, I mean, I guess the only boutique pedal as such there is the, is the Origin, right? Yes. Yeah. But, you know, again, it's because um, when you dig in, you can feel the compression of the amps and it does break up a bit and it just sounds so great. That's why we love valve amps. They do that so wonderfully well, you know. Yeah, cue the comment. Can you do this video again but with some transistor amps? We will get onto transistor amps, we will. You will. Yeah. <laughs> no, we will. We're, we're we will. Not, we're not fans, okay? And that's fine because we're, we're allowed an opinion and the reason that we're not is because we grew up with valve amps. Yep. It's pretty much that. Yeah, but we will get onto transistor amps because I think we, we need to test some of our preconceptions. For but sure. Anyway, that's for another day. That's for another day. Okay. So right, come on then. Uh, let's go for a just a really great rock rhythm guitar sound. Okay. Where would we go for that? Okay. Well, let's just uh, let's try. I would say the Capo DM to start with. <laughs> So, I mean, that is as tasty as <laughs> you like. Not, not, nothing wrong with that, no, is there? No, no. Um, um. Now, if I wanted to, you know, boost that further, it's the tumnus into the carpet here. It's 
delicious. <laughs> so good. Uh, go on, put some uh, put some um, rotary thing on there as well. Then some uh, some modulation. Okay, let's do some. Cool sounds. Well, there you go. So, for, for you know, people who are asking us about little amps and you know, some awesome sounds to be had there. Um, you know, and don't forget, a lot of the best recorded sounds are done with little amps as well. Blimey, yeah. I mean, certainly Fender Deluxes and stuff like that. Yeah, and old Supros and yeah, yeah. You know, oh, Led Zeppelin. Don't even go there. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, I love that. He recorded. Um, everyone was asking him, "How do you get that the the, um, the stairway to heaven tone on his Les Paul?" Because actually recorded it with a Telecaster. <laughs> I love that. So yeah, but you know, fantastic tool tones. If you you know, up for getting a couple of little amplifiers together, voicing them right, and getting pedals that, that work with it. I think awesome. that's the I think that's the point. I, I speak to a lot of people, and certainly in the comments section here, who are really stressing over what amp to buy, and yeah. that amp's going to cost them twelve, thirteen hundred quid, whatever. You know, a lot of money, yeah. or two thousand dollars, or what, fifty-eight trillion yen, or <laughs> two billion Zimbabwe, and that was two billion Zimbabwe and five seconds ago. It's now three billion. <laughs> but exactly, spending a lot of money when actually you could. In all seriousness, look at two amps and, uh, yeah. and just run them together. And the other thing is, you can you can shape your tone with two smaller amplifiers and yeah. really find your own sound. Yeah. You know, it's a great, great way to do it. Plus, of Love course, it. you've probably already got one small amp. Yeah. Uh, so adding something to it is a, is a good way to go. And with judicious choices of pedals, and they really don't have to be expensive stuff like we've got on here. Standard. Well, they've got to be things that you connect with. Yeah, yeah, pedals that, that work for Just, you. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, but yeah. it's a really cool way to do it. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. Some some really good tones out of little amps. Yeah, I, I love that. That was so yeah. cool. I think we might use this setup more often. Yeah, really, really nice. Yeah. Okay, excellent, yes. guys. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Cheers, guys. Bye.
My goodness. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> ah!